Geography, now France. Should we do the thing? Oh, oui, 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 Yes, we like our accents, and that's how you speak French. Don't even fight it. Don't deny it. That's who you are, French people. Yeah, don't worry. We've we've done Italian. We've done British. We're yeah. We're basically oi 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 Australian. Oh yes, yeah, so we're basically accent connoisseurs. You know. Yeah. Oh, oh. We are. I think we're, that's a French word, isn't it? When we go to Carrefour, yes. like once a week. We live in Tbilisi, Georgia, and there's a Carrefour. So yeah. If that's even how you say it. So we're French now. Yeah. You're welcome. We have some French product. I have, wait, I'll be right back. These are from France. Are you kidding me? I bought these a week ago, or like two weeks ago, just cause I was like, oh, those are probably terrible. Let me try them. And they have not been opened. And I feel like no French people even eat them. No, probably not. But they're from France. They're, they're French meaty pizzas right bought there. Bought in a Carrefour. That's pretty sick. Welcome back everybody to another Geography Now reaction. After that great intro, I hope you're all ready for an epic reaction. Check out our travel channel. Like we said, we are in Europe right now. Europe, Asia, whatever. I mean, we're right in the Caucasus Mountains. So that's the thing, cause that's usually the cutoff down from Russia, but we're like right in the middle. So people, you just get to choose. Yeah. You just get to choose, all right? Typing, no, actually you don't get to choose. Geographically, it would be considered Asia, though but culturally, very most very Georgians very. would say European. So uh, yeah. yeah. Let's do France now. Check out our travel channel. Like I said, we are going to be traveling around Europe. We're currently in Tbilisi. We're going to be going through Europe. Check out some countries, check out some things, and France will definitely be one of those things we end up in. And go check out that channel. We have some a singular vlog up there. We have actually one from Poland coming very soon. Oh, or maybe oh. it's already up at this point, so go check that out too. All right, let's do this. Geography now, France. Certains d'entre vous le savent, en huitième des mois est français. J'ai donc en quelque sorte une obligation de honorer mon héritage. Oh. It's time to learn geography. He didn't say we, 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 we. Everyone, I'm your host, Barbie. Ah, oh, pretty much everybody on the planet has heard of this place. I mean, immediately images of wine, cafes, embellished 18th century Baroque architecture, and people who really hate what about the Eiffel Tower? English language. But take a step back even further, and France becomes a place with jaguars, coconuts, volcanoes, penguins, grass skirts, war dances, bamboo flutes, witch doctors, and a multifaceted what? history that has evolved into a people group into becoming one of the most notable nations on the planet. It. They're I talking about like the French zoo, they have jaguars, right? The Probably. Paris Zoo. Uh, yeah, not, yeah. Not their ter overseas territories? No, no. Oh, Allons-y! The first thing you need to know about France is that it's not just European, but a transcontinental country that spans across 12 time zones, more than any other country in the world. Mais comment est-ce que possible? Laissez-moi expliquer, croissant. France is kind of divided into two main parts. The European metropolitan France, where about 95% of the population lives, and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories, otherwise known as the département et territoire d'Ontario. They always, whenever they show like uh, South America, like maps showing statistics and stuff, they always connect French Guiana with like France and then it's always like disproportionate to the rest of yeah. South America. It's always so interesting to me. I'm like, why is that one? Oh yeah. Comer <laughs> or Dom Tom. Before we tell you what they are, let's explain the difference between them. Regions have exactly the same legal status as mainland France and the same civil, penal code, and administrative social tax laws. However, they can be slightly adapted to suit the region's particular needs. In collectivities, the autonomy rises and they are empowered to make their own laws, except in certain areas like defense, currency, trade, and diplomacy. The overseas regions hmm. are Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guyana in South America, which by the way has the Kuro Space Center, disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra a gravitational slingshot effect because it's so close to the equator of the earth and Ooh. reunion and mayotte off the coast of east africa the overseas collectivities are french polynesia you've probably heard of tahiti that's french polynesia as well as wallace and futuna in the pacific saint pierre and michelon right off the coast of canada saint Barthélemy and saint martin which is the only place in france that has a border with the netherlands as the dutch own the southern part of the island located all in the country the only islands that lie under the title of overseas territories are the french southern and antarctic islands or the ta 
AAF. These islands are made up of the Cruellen Islands, the St. Paul and Amsterdam Islands, St. Paul. Guess who used to own those, the Crozet Islands, and Adeliland, the claimed slice of Antarctica that is technically not recognized thanks to the Antarctic Treaty. And as of 2007, the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands are mostly <laughs> uninhabited and only house temporary military or scientific personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of the previously mentioned categories. There's the uninhabited Clipperton Island off the coast of Mexico, which has a crazy murder story behind it. And oh. last but not least, there's New Caledonia, which has a special particular status out of the French administered overseas territories. New Caledonia is the only one that's vying for a kind of somewhat independence as the political power was passed to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual French EU and New Caledonian citizenship thing going on. And in 2018, they will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, they together give France the second largest executive economic zone in the world after the US. Whew. Okay, now let's go back to metropolitan Europe, France. The country is located in Western Europe, bordered by eight other nation states. Don't forget little Andorra and Monaco, oh. along the coast by the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay little in the Andorra. north and west, as well as the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon, since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks like it has six sides. Quite frankly, I, I was always under the impression that it kind of looked like a teapot with feet. Mainland France is also divided uh, into- I just thought it was, like, looked like just like a really weird shape and that's France. Yeah, yeah, it kind of, it looked like France to me. Yeah. <laughs> regions including Corsica Island, 18 altogether if you include the overseas regions, with the capital, largest city, as well as the main cultural and commercial center, Paris. We could talk nice. on and on about Paris, what with the unbelievably designed metropolitan layout, mm. the rich, vibrant atmosphere, the juxtaposition of classically adorned historical sites along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, à minuit, il y a tout ce que vous voulez, au champs but that in itself would take too long. We gotta get I don't know what that means. Me neither. Airports are the two Paris twins, Charles de Gaulle and Orly International, uh. as well as Nice, Côte d'Azur, and the second and third largest cities, Lyon Saint Exupéry and Marseille Provence International. At around 643,000 square kilometers, France is the largest country in the EU. The interesting thing about France is that it's kind of divided into areas that historically had their own distinct cultural identity. Some of the most notable ones being Occitania, Savoy, Brittany, Normandy, Alsace, a section of the Basque Country, Nice, and the island. Of Corsica, which speaks its own dialect most French people can't even understand. These really? regions contribute their own unique piece of the French pie. Speaking of pie, we all know about French food, which is great because we're gonna discuss more about it in. Oh, yes. Food, food, food. If you yeah. look at France's physical makeup, you yeah. start to kind of understand why food plays such a huge role in culture. Everything just kind of works out perfectly for them. For metropolitan France, big, rich, nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the Garonne, Dordogne, Loire, Seine, Meuse, and Rhone entangle the entire country north to south, east to west allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in nearly every corner of the country. Now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines. They enjoy a nice oceanic European climate and they don't suffer regularly from any major natural catastrophes. Mm. Most of the country is made up of arable Convenient. flat plains or small rolling green hills that are just begging for cultivation and voila, right. an agricultural gold mine. In fact, out of- Cultivate me! Oh, I want grains! <laughs> <laughs> is that what they say? That's the hills. French people, can you let us know? Is that what the hills say in your country in our country they don't speak no unfortunately but the hills do have eyes that movie showed it it was cannibals that were in in the mountains and they can kill people and eat them. Every country in the EU, France reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience and only a few spots like in the Caucasus region and parts of Eastern Europe and Southern Russia rank higher. So there you go, food haven. In the south, you reach the mountainous regions of France, including the Pyrenees mm. along the border with Spain, the Massif Central Plateaus, one of the most geologically studied places in Europe due to this strange formation, the Alps all along the borders with Italy and Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland was all like, mm, yeah, I'm not gonna share Lake Le Mans, it's mine. And that's how Geneva was born. The highest point in France, let alone all of the EU, is Mont Blanc, found in the Mont French Blanc. Alps along the border with Italy, only second in height to the Caucasus Mountains in all of Europe. If you consider hey. the Caucasus region a part of Europe, some people That's know. what we're that's talking about. Huh? France is a cornucopia of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere, cheese and wine. The French are the largest consumers of cheese with over 1,200 different varieties found all over the country. That's a lot the of French cheese. Also yeah. have a larger range of unconventionally consumed meat products. 
Ducks. Uh -oh. Most countries stick with beef, chicken, pork, maybe lamb or goat and fish. However, the French aren't Frogs. satisfied with just that. Other animals like pheasant, duck, goose, quail, rabbit, venison, veal, horse, frogs, and snails are consumed regularly. Snail. Speaking of which, the national animal is the Gallic rooster, which is why you might typically see a lot of roosters on French affiliated symbols. In fact, France is one of the most entomophagous, that's insect eating, countries in Europe, as about oh. 700 million snails are estimated to be consumed every year by the French, especially oh. in Burgundy, the largest snail producing region in France. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French are the highest consumers of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half the population is suspected to have. This I have Taxoplasma die or whatever he said. Um, there's a 50% chance I do. Maybe I should, maybe we should stop shopping for French things at uh, Carrefour. Yeah, let's not go to Carrefour. Let's go to, <laughs> I don't know. Spar. Where, yeah, I don't know where Spar is from, but yeah, let's go to Spar. <laughs> This little guy eventually finds its way into your brain, changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious. Look it up, I'm not even joking. The, the Alps are famous for their charcuterie I'm and fondue, fondue, Brittany for its crepes, fondue. Cantal for its crepes. chestnuts, Dijon oh. for its mustard, La Veyron for Aligo, Rem for its champagne, and then we get to Bordeaux. Now, first of all, every uh -huh. region of France likes to claim that they have the best wine. However, it's widely known that Bordeaux is disputably the home of the largest wine vineyards in the world, pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year. The French half take their billion? very seriously and became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. Mm, All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food banks to combat uh. crop wastage on farms. France's even must donate wastage to either charities or... Picture the U.S. Yeah, yeah, I noticed the flag. I didn't even like bat an eye to it for some reason though, yeah. This guy's like, oh yeah. He looks like he's gonna go like lift those and work out yeah. with them. Ooh. Get some food banks to combat crop wastage on farms. France has even opened up ugly fruit or vegetable shops in which you can buy disfigured produce for 30% off. Other than foodstuffs, <laughs> though, main exports are aircraft, chemicals, machinery, iron, and steel, electronics, motor vehicles, and pharmaceuticals. Of course, the of overseas stuff. territories and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different. The Caribbean islands and Guyana enjoy a warm Caribbean tropical climate, Guyana being part of the Amazon, having one of the highest forest cover densities in the world at over 95 percent with over 1100 species of birds and Soft. reptiles and mammals found in it. Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of Africa have deep jungle ravines Whoa. and a common Whoa. volcanic activity. Those are deep jungle the scattered ravines. islands are mostly uninhabited, sandbanks and lagoons with nothing more than just a few trees and shrubs. The southern Antarctic islands are rocky and desolate with Whoa. few grasses and vegetation. Kerwellen has these cabbage looking things going on. And these islands typically okay. freeze <laughs> over in the winter with penguins stampeding <gasps> off the coast. Thank you, thank you. And French Polynesia are tropical Pacific islands that enjoy an abundance of rich unspoiled thick jungle brush and colorful flowers and of course Adelie land is like all ice and Antarctica all right we've discussed borders boundaries mountains food volcanoes now let's talk about who's running the entire show France is a country of people that are very, very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First of all, the country has about 67 million people and is the second largest in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are black, and a little less than 2% are Asian. The currency is the Euro, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road, which makes things interesting when their neighbors from the UK come across the channel. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the white people. Most white White French people have some or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions of modern day France. That means genetically, the French and British have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an admixture of Latin and Germanic roots also applies as all three people groups had their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is of course the official language. However, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part, they do pretty well at making sure everyone speaks it. Granted, the linguistic zones that we mentioned before each have their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find street signs written in these languages. For example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish found in Brittany, Basque in the Basque country, Occitan in Occitania. Corsicans have like this strange half French, half Italian hybrid thing going on. Oh, okay. so most of the languages spoken in the linguistic zones are kind of dying out, and only the older generation really retains daily conversation in those languages. Outside of metropolitan France, the overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition typically have their own creoles or dialects. For example, 
example, in the Caribbean, Martinique and Guadeloupe might say, Saka marche, tu bon man, timal man. In Reunion or Mayotte, they might say, Coiffe, comment il est, a ou. France is the most visited country oh, in the world, as ou. more people than the entire population of France visit France annually at about 80 million. Jeez. Culture wise, there is too much to discuss. I mean, we are talking millennia of tribes, wars, empires, heroes, villains, artists, poets, architects, kings, queens, guillotines, revolutions, mm. inventions, mm, guillotine. music, dance, clothing, fashion, cinema, cuisine, discoveries, victories, losses, folklore, science, literature, medicine, and baguettes. To cover it all, we need a whole separate That's YouTube channel. But one. for what it's worth, since the Middle Ages, France has been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned with. I mean, the French at one point in time had the second largest empire in the world, yeah, spanning across crazy. virtually every region on every continent. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing Anglophone-driven global economy, France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has aimed at doing this since 1634. They do things Jeez, like, somewhat old. unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, parking, email, and weekend. In addition, the French media's top regulators, the CSA Weird. and CNC, have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French language between the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And half of the music Weird. order must be less than six months old. Everything must be. Everyone, everyone before 8 p.m. Hmm, French music after 8 p.m. I don't know what they listen to, but oh, not French music. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a very is that like an actual thing or is that just like they're like oh do this and then they don't like enforce it or like yeah that's a we that's interesting very very interesting that they're just like no you have to like a lot of times it's just like a cultural thing it just happens where you end up listening to the Americans end up listening to American music whatever you know Koreans listen to South Korean music. But there, they have to listen to it. at least 40% French music. Yeah, and between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., so when most people are, like, up. Yeah. Weird. They're going to make sure, they're like, you're French and you're going to listen to France. You're going to take the bigot and... You don't know it. what I can do with this <laughs> bag. Oh, no. <laughs> don't make me. French. France is, of course, home to a plethora of notable figures in every field of academia and athleticism. I mean, they have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemist Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. Other scientists, huh? writers, and philosophers like Descartes, Pascal, Baudelaire, Flaubert, Pasteur, Châtelet, Bouton, who, by the way, invented the metric system. Musicians like Ramnaud. Metric system? Um, <laughs> we use freedom units. <laughs> That's a joke. I, I, I prefer the metric system, but uh, as, as people who have already used the imperial system, it's kind of hard because our, like, the way we interpret things is all through that. You so mean we just interpret freedom? Yes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's what I'm but metric system makes sense. No freedom makes sense. Don't take away my freedom. Louis, Debussy, Jacques Brel, Edith Piaf. Of course, we can't forget the fashion icons Louis Vuitton, Coco Chanel, and Christine Duart. I mean, it's no secret. What France companies did they make? The fashion oh. capital of the world. Artists like Monet, Cezanne, Renoir, Degas, Manet, and Gauguin. And of course, what's an episode about France without mentioning anything about kings Louis the Fourteenth and Sixteenth, Joan of Arc, and Napoleon? In a simple way of putting it, Napoleon. French culture is very vibrant and proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. The Catholic Church once played a major role, and to this day, even as a second. Oh. That's I, I saw it before it started on fire. But it'll be better soon, right? Yeah, hopefully. It's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. It was a cool church. state with dwindling church attendees. Many French people still, in the very least, identify. I didn't go in. The line was way too long. Mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history, and they don't want to toss it away. They also love taking breaks and getting their sleep. On average, the <laughs> French get about 8.83 hours Whoa. of sleep every day, more than any other country in the developed world. And they also have really? some of the shortest work weeks, with only about six to seven hours on average a day. And that's enough for them. It's not uncommon to see <laughs> people taking time off in the and middle of the day. And it's weird that they uh that. Uh, they can still uh, make a living off that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe uh, the freedom country. Uh, Do they not like to work 40 plus hours a week? Yeah, that sounds like freedom to me. You need to work overtime for no extra pay. Freedom. And no vacation. Freedom. So stupid. <laughs> this... Do you want me to turn into an eagle again? <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely going to be people who watch this 
and not get that that is sarcasm. Yeah. And they've already angrily commented and it's down there and we're going to read it. And we're going to be like, wow, this person is clueless. And that's usually how it works. But it's funny. Yeah. Early evening, just to relax and take a nap. They even have a word for it. L'heure de l'apéro, which literally translates to the hour of the aperitif. People can also claim state pension at age 62, making it one of the lowest retirement ages wow. in the world. And of course, the sport French people rank highest in the world going on strike. I mean, the last <laughs> thing you want to do is interrupt a Frenchman's nap during a six-hour shift with corporate policy changes. Yep, the world can be a cruel, cruel place. Let's see how France survives in the jungle. <laughs> When it comes to France, they don't discriminate. They hate everyone equally. No, <laughs> seriously, France has their eyes on a few people, and when they see what they like, they cling on and make you a treasure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former Roman legacy nations generally get the high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They mm. adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they love making fun of each other even more, even though they are really close. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia are the closest African nations as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, followed by sub-Saharan African countries like Cameroon and Côte d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, things like castles, attire, and food. Likewise, Japan sort of shares the same mutual fascination and see France as like its European alternate universe twin. There's no two countries that like to poke fun of and borderline harass each other with the French as the UK and the USA. As historical rivals with the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred year war with them and the USA busting oh, their chops about World War II all the time all sides like yeah French people why are you even watching this just go surrender already oh oh, oh that history nerd joke that everyone yeah. makes and thinks they're funny the yeah just saying that French people are pansies because they surrendered even though I don't think anyone watching this video has ever been in a war that they've surrendered in. No. Or been alive during But war. it happened to your country, so it's oh. you too. <laughs> like to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK and France have been crossing borders and intermarrying uh -huh. for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high, and the US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War, and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. Hey. So fellow Americans, wow. thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? It was a kind gesture. France's best friends, though, would probably be Germany and Belgium. It's kind of funny because historically, the only country that was consistently an opponent of France was Germany. Ever since the split of Charlemagne's empire in three, most of Europe's history was driven by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany, including the Holy Roman Empire, the Teutonic Order, Prussia, and of course, the Third Reich. But the plot twist was the creation of the EU. Following Robert Schumann's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work, the millennia-old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good. Ever since 1950, France and Germany have taken a lot of political inspiration off of each other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous occasions, and both countries have been the biggest advocates for the survival of of the Union. And Belgium is like their little brother that moved out and got a Dutch-speaking <laughs> roommate and visits France every so often to raid their fridge and do their laundry. In conclusion, les Français sont connus pour être intrépides, turbulents, mais qui gardent quand même un certain charme. Ils ont parfois l'air des symboles, mais bon, essaye de vivre dans un pays envahi 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7, par des hordes de touristes qui piétinent vos jardins, massacrent votre gastronomie, et vous demandez de vous plaire au moindre de leur désir. Merci. Merci. Petit merci. Oh, France. Faut le comprendre. Stay tuned. France's rich former little colony, Gabon, is coming up next. Oh. That was geography now, wow. France. I like how there was uh, so much history to go through that he just didn't even go yeah. through it. He was like, just like, yeah. this happened, war, yeah. war, another war, uh, science, medicine, stuff. Yeah, France has quite the extensive history. Extensive. Yeah, so I mean, I'm surrendering. Oh my God. <laughs> They're gonna get so mad. That was a joke, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. This is, it's really interesting. I mean, I really, I've been to France. I went to Paris only. That's the only place. We almost went to Nice last mm -hmm. summer. We were gonna go, and then we ended up being like, oh, let's just stay in Italy the whole time. But I really like Paris. I thought the food was fantastic. The city is beautiful. I, everything about it I really, really liked. And I wasn't sure because Paris is the big touristy place. Everybody goes to Paris and I'm kind of like, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to places everyone else goes. And I went there and I was like, wow, this is awesome. I love it. It's cool. Yeah, I'm Paris. sure. I'm sure that tourists, just having that many tourists is pretty crazy. I mean, like, 
I, I mean, it's a decent sized country, but not in comparison to like some of the bigger countries that you'd expect to get more tourists and for them to have so many tourists, it's crazy. That must get annoying. France. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you enjoy. Check out the travel channel. We'll be in France soon, trying food, going to mountains, going to PSG games and oh, yeah. stuff like that. See you in the next one.